Hi everyone, welcome to National Science Week. The theme is Deep Blue and we're really lucky to be near our Deep Blue here at the Taronga Seal Theatre. And I'm with Keeper Ree and she's going to tell us about some incredible creatures. We wanted to start with the best first and get you enthused and pumped up for National Science Week. Now, we have some very, very special creatures in here, don't we Ree? Yeah, that's right Hayden. So, the two animals that are behind us are our beautiful Australian sea lions and they're two and three year olds. So these guys are the youngest ones we have here at Taronga. Now Australian sea lions are really amazing because first of all they're one of the rarest sea lion species in the world and second of all they're endemic to Australia so they're only found in our country. Now this makes them really special because obviously there are threats that are um, they have in the wild. So here at Taronga we actually have a breeding program for this species and these beautiful boys behind us are a product of that breeding program. That's fantastic. They're so beautiful. How old are these two? So Moby who is slightly bigger, he's like a bit more silvery, he's about to turn three and Torre is just about to turn two and they're about a year and two months apart. And how big would they get when they're fully mature? So at the moment, these guys are weighing in at around 50 and 65 kilos, but as a Same mature boy, <laughs> really, <coughs> carry on, Ree. <laughs> as a mature bull, these boys can reach weights of, of over 350 kilos. 350 kilos. Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> so they do have a lot of growing to do. Check this out. They are <laughs> so incredible. They're so beautiful. They're playing around with a few toys in the pool at the moment. But Ree, these are critically endangered, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. So. At the moment, Australian sea lions are declining in the wild at around 2% a year and their numbers are only around 12,000, which gives them that status of one of the rarest sea lions. Now unfortunately for these guys, there are so many things that are threatening them, including overfishing, um, entanglement and all of the natural things that would affect them as well. But Australian sea lions are really unique because they're, they're different to other seals in the fact that their mums have an 18 month gestation. Wow. So every other seal species is just pregnant for 12 months. These guys, it takes an extra six months to produce one puppy. So it does take a long time for their populations That's to recover. That's longer than a giraffe. Yeah, it's a really long Seriously, time. Seriously, 18 months, wow. Yeah. Now, what are some of the uh, sort of features that differs a, an Australian sea lion from like a New Zealand fur seal? Yeah, great question Hayden. So sea lions and fur seals are only different in the fact that they have different layers of fur. So our sea lions here, they look really streamlined and that's because they just have one layer of fur. Now the fur seals that we have here at Taronga, they have a double layer of fur and that's what gives them a really shaggy appearance. So that's the difference between a sea lion and a fur seal. These guys have got a beautiful sort of silver underbelly, haven't they? Do the females and the males look the same as they mature? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, these guys are sexually dimorphic, which means the males and females look really different. So at the moment, you can see that these boys are brown and cream, mm -hmm. or silver and cream. And as they get older, they'll actually change color to a full chocolate brown when they're around five years old. Now, the last color change for a male Australian sea lion is they get this blonde cap on the top of their head, and that's a sign of their maturity. So it says that they're ready for breeding. Now Australian sea lion females are different because they actually remain this colour. So females will stay silver and cream their entire life um, and that's how you can tell the difference between a male and female when they're mature. However, as the juvenile male, they pretty much all will look the same to the juvenile females. Okay, so they're playing with two nice bits of toy in here. Uh, one is, believe it or not, is a food tray <laughs> from our cafe and Torre is absolutely obsessed with this toy and plays <laughs> with it all day and has the best time. So he's playing with that at the moment. Um, there's a symbol up here that I really want to tell you about. It's really super, super important. And there's a lot of resources that are linked to this, this uh, video. You can get them off your teachers as well. They're on the website. And I'm going to get Ree to tell us all about it because she's incredibly passionate about it. And if there's anything that you can take away from today, this little video, look up about these resources with that symbol over there. Tell us about it, Ree. So Hayden, the really important thing about MSC was first of all it stands for the Marine Stewardship Council and they're an international group that govern fisheries. Now MSC is really important for our sea lion friends in the wild because one of the biggest threats that these guys are facing is overfishing. Now the overfishing is because these really large fisheries are taking too much fish than they should be and they're also taking bycatch which means species that aren't targeted. Now the bycatch can be other fish species that they shouldn't be catching but it can also be sea lions. So if you're buying 
seafood that is MSC certified, it means their bycatch rates are really low yeah. and it also means that they're not taking too much of that fish stock away from the ocean that, that these guys need to feed on. So by buying MSC certified seafood, you're ensuring that Australian sea lions and all our other marine friends have food for the future. It's really important and every time that we do a presentation here, we talk about MSC and if you can go to your fishmonger or your fish supplier and ask if that fish is MSC, then you're putting pressure on them, you're making them ask, go with mum and dad and say, is this MSC certified fish? And that, that fishmonger will actually go, hang on, the more people that are saying it, the more likely I am to start to stock it, stock it right, Ree? Yeah, that's right. So it's really up to us as consumers to ask for MSC because there's no point in fisheries getting certified if nobody cares. So one of the biggest things that we can do, if you've got a place where you go get seafood regularly, is ask them if they have MSC certified seafood. And some people might say, well, what's that? And then you can go ahead and tell them. Now, the more people that ask that person that sells fish about MSC, the more likely they are to stock it. They're going to pay for it to have it in their store. And that's going to increase the demand for MSC certified seafood. Totally, totally. That's what we need to do, Hayden. And you are the next stewards of the, of the planet. You're the next people that are going to look after this planet. But we can talk about something else as well. And that is some other species that we have here at Taronga. Yeah. What else do we have? So we have four different species of seals here at Taronga. So of course we've got our beautiful Australian sea lions um, that are the focus of our breeding program. We also have California sea lions. So these guys are natives to the west coast of America, but all of our guys were actually born in zoos around Australia and the world. We also have some rescued species of seals that are more locally found. So the long-nosed fur seals or our New Zealand fur seals um, are also here at Taronga and all of the ones that we have here are all rescued animals. They've washed up around Sydney's beaches and have come in through our hospital. And we also have a single sub-Antarctic fur seal who came into us the same way through our hospital, but he so was that's rescued. Rare, relocated or rescued. That's right. That's all our seals. Is there any chance just for our incredible students here that we could see something else for you? Have you got time? Yeah, I think we have time. Let's go check out another right. one of our seals. Come and have a look at this. So Ree, who do we have here? This is Murphy, our largest and eldest California sea lion. Isn't he amazing? Check him out. So very, very different from our Australian sea lions we were just with. Can you talk through some of the adaptations for us, please? Yeah, so our seals and sea lions are perfectly adapted to a life in the ocean. And they have a few features that you can see really easily um, that show that off. So first of all, I'm gonna point out Murph's whiskers there. You can see they're really long. He has really great control of those whiskers. Now we call them vibrissae and what they use these for are when they can't find food in dark or murky water, they can actually pick up on the vibrations that fish are making in the water and they can track their food down using those whiskers. Now what other features they have on their head are those ears. So all the seals we have here are either fur seals or sea lions and they all fall under the eared seal family or the odorants. They're so, tiny aren't they? That's right, they're these tiny little ears on the side of Murphy's, no, uh, of Murphy's head right here. They sort of fold back too. That's right. right. They are, they're rolled up so yeah. that they don't get any water in them, but they're also perfectly um, curled so that they don't cause any drag. So mm -hmm. they can move through the water without having these big flopping ears holding them back. Now you might also notice that when Murphy's just sitting here, he's actually holding his breath. And our sea lions can control when they're breathing, just like we can, but they actually shut their nose when they're diving so that they can hold their breath for a nice deep dive and they'll take a breath with their nose when they come out of the water. He is so beautiful. But he's got quite a large crest on his head. Is that females and males? No, that's a sagittal crest and that's just something that the males have. As they get mature, unlike the Australian sea lion who get a blonde cap on their head, mm -hmm. the California sea lions like Murph actually get a sagittal crest and that bump gets higher as they become more mature. Okay, and that's with the bulls. Yes. And that anchors the big muscles on their jaws onto that top there, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, totally. And it also is a status symbol. So it shows the females that they're a big, strong animal and that you want to breed with me. Yeah. Now, 
A lot of people think that seals can't get around very well on land, but I think there's, uh, they, they, these guys can prove them wrong there. Yeah, that's right. Now, one of the most important parts of these guys' bodies is obviously the shape of their body. And they're actually shaped like a spindle. So they're skinny at the top and skinny at the end, and then their big bellies in the middle. But that makes for a perfect little torpedo as they power through the water. They can reach speeds of almost 30 kilometers an hour when they're swimming. Wow. So they need to have a really well-designed body shape in order to swim through the water easily. Now we're talking about their flippers before. Yeah, I, I was gonna ask, they're massive on the front here, aren't they? They are. So all eared seals have larger front flippers than their rear flippers, and this is how they move forward in the water. Now, one of the coolest adaptations these guys have for a life in the ocean is that in this flipper, Murph can have a look. He actually has the same bone structure in the flipper that our hands have. Absolutely. And that's look covered at that. in this beautiful skin. It's really nice and thick, almost like rubber, and that helps them propel themselves forward, just like flippers would if you were wearing them when you were going for a swim or swimming in the pool. It makes you faster. Yeah. Oh, he is magnificent. What would he be weighing as well? I can, I, it's a question I'm sure is on a lot of people's lips. Um, we're standing next or sitting, kneeling next to him and our body shapes are a little bit smaller than his. What's he weigh? He's about 250 kilos at the moment. Wow. He's pretty big. A quarter big. of a ton of sea lion in front of us. It's California sea lion. How beautiful is he? Murphy, you are an absolute legend. Now, if that wasn't enough to get you inspired about joining into National Science Week in the deep blue, I don't know what is. Ree, thank you so, so much for that. But Ree, students, the next champions of the planet, the next guardians of the planet, they can be really, really impactful on the future and the safety of our planet, can't they? That's right. So it's really up to us as individuals. If you next time go buying seafood, make sure you look out for the MSC fish stick. Tell your parents, tell your friends, make sure everyone around you is doing the same because we want to ensure a future for our beautiful sea lion friends and all the marine life that we share the planet with. So choose MSC and you can all be champions for the wild. Absolutely, Ree. This is your chance. Nas National Science Week, the deep blue, that's the theme this year. Get involved, do as much as you possibly can. The links are on the website. Your teachers have got all the links. Ask them, pester them. Be a pest, be the mosquito in the tent and you're gonna be a champion for the wild. We'll see ya, thanks so much.